and welcome to the February, although it's now March, uh, update for uh, Midland Magic News Roundup. As you can see, it's only me today. Sam is busy uh, off making the plethora of Disneyland Paris We Love You videos, which we spontaneously decided to make a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> um, so she'll be busy doing those, so you'll get solo uh, Paris videos from Sam. So I'm currently doing the news. So let's start with Universal this month with the mega update from Epic Universe, which absolutely shed lights has been happening. So we'll rattle through land by land very quickly. Otherwise, we'll be here all day. So starting in How to Train Your Dragon Land, um, the skeletons, skeletons of the two statues, which can be seen uh, in the movie just outside the island of Burke, uh, the Viking and the Dragon are now in place just inside the land's entrance in a lagoon. So as you enter How to Train Your Dragon Land, one of the first things you're going to see is the Viking and Dragon statue as just as if at the opening of the film where you fly over the top of Burke. Um, these statues also have flame conduits in, so they will be billowing out flame at some point. So possibly similar to what's the dragon on top of Gringotts. We're not sure whether they'll be part of a live show, or whether it will spontaneously spew flame out every now and then, but uh, it looks to be good and right in the center of the lagoon. Um, most of the track for the coaster is in place and it's expected to be, it's expected to be a family roller coaster, probably a spinning one. The spinning roller coaster seems to be a thing in Epic Universe. It's got lots of banked turns, but no drastic drops or no inversions, thank God, because that means I'll be able to ride it. Uh, the Great Hall restaurant is well underway. So obviously this is themed on the Great Hall um, from Burke. Um, so it's a great big round structure with uh, with pillars. So that's well underway. Um, and the quick service restaurant that's next door has seemingly appeared to have sprung up overnight. So last month's pictures, it was groundwork. This month, there's walls, there's sides, there's... And it looks to be big. Uh, and also the theatre building's coming along nicely. That's also got some walls up now, but and it's obvious that you can see that it's going to be a, a large theatre for, for an indoor show. So Universal's Monsters Land. So lots of stuff happened on that, that, that last month. So this month, they've been finishing off the last bit of the roller coaster track and a new barn theming section has appeared in what, what looks to be a, a section where you go out of the barn, into the barn, out of the barn, potentially. Um, and there's lots of buildings with facades that are that are up um, and the windmill themed dining section has had a new bit added. Um, so they're working slowly away on Universal Monsters now. They look, look like they've done a lot more construction on some of the other bits um, because Universal Monsters, most of its integral parts are already there. So moving on to Wizarding World, the framing for the entrance is now in place and it looks like a, it looks a bit like the Arc de Triomphe. It looks like a Paris style art, archway um, made out of stone, uh, but we'll see. But the Wizarding World is expected to be based on a Parisian town. So similar to some of the buildings that maybe you'll see when you watch uh, the Fantastic Beasts where they travel from city to city. Um, there's lots of facades put up, lots of, it looks like it's going to be a proper, a proper villagey, towny like, um, like area with lots of little buildings. Um, but we'll, I'm really excited to see what they do with that because they, the theme in that they've done it um, and the other two Wizarding World pieces of the park is, is just like Hogsmeade and Diagon Alley are just like straight out of the movie. So uh, expecting something as good, if not better, because Universal really do like to up their game, don't they? So moving on to Super Nintendo World, the entrance of the warp type is being covered in electrical conduit. So we're expecting it to have the LEDs as you walk through, um, like in the other two uh, Super Nintendo Worlds. The framing for Peach's Castles in place and, and pretty much done. Um, the Toadstool Cafe framing is all in place. Um, the Roche Yoshi ride tracks being installed. The Donkey Kong coaster is underway. So it's all systems go in Super Nintendo World. And yeah, it, it looks much bigger than the other two. Much bigger than the other two. 
uh, but we'll, we'll see we can see how we go and the and the gift shop appears to be outside of super nintendo world rather than inside the park so they really are using the entire space of the land for rides and attractions and they're moving the gift shop to just opposite the entrance portal um, which means that, that there'll be way more stuff going on at super nintendo world at universal than there is universal orlando than there is in the other other two um super nintendo world parks um moving on to the uh, park entry and hub areas the gift shop the largest gift shop and guest services building which is near the front of the park is taking shape so the guest services building looks huge and the gift shop looks huge it's massive um but things like stroller rental and you know like your, your, your information desk all of that is going to be right at the front of the park easy to find you won't be able to miss it great big building um and it looks like it might have some undercover for rainy sun as well so always useful in the very unpredictable Orlando weather um what else has been going on so the hub central flat ride um has had its basement level enclosed all the gubbins will be underneath so we won't be able to see what's going on with that now um there's still no news on what that ride might be we're expecting from rumors and patents that have been place that it's going to be a spinny ride not sure what kind of spinny ride but spinny whether it's carousel spinny teacups or waltzer style spinny but it's round and we imagine that things are going to go around on it uh what else is going on sub sub the hub's central fountain which is a bellagio style fountain by the looks of it is well underway too Totally expecting there, there to be some kind of water sh nighttime water show going on on that fountain. Uh, really excited to see what they do with it. Um, uh, that And that's sort of speeding along quite nicely, as is the hotel at the back of the park, which is behind the fountain. So the facade of that hotel went up fairly quickly. So it looks like there's lots of stuff going on inside now, but obviously it's hard to judge how far they've got because we can't see inside the building. So no matter how great Mr. Bio Reconstruct is with his aerial photos, he's not worked out to sneak into buildings to see what they're doing inside yet. Maybe not do that. Um, the Hubs Roller Coaster, which has two tracks, is going to be absolutely massive and some very large pieces have been installed. So there's gonna be mighty drops, lots of banks, lots of twisty turnies, lots of corkscrewy kind of terrifying bits. So I will be back, lady. Um, so not all of the track has been laid yet. Um, that's going on amongst all the other things. It looks like they're trying to lay all the coaster track at once. So they've done all the track inside um, Monsters Lands. They appear to have done most of the track now inside how to train your dragon lands and now they seem to be moving on to doing the 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 dueling roller coaster that's in the in the hub um the other bit of news is the hotel that's just outside the park which we're expected to be space themed has now had most of its outer construction completed and it does look like a 1960s space ship hotel-y kind of thing because it's got oval windows and it looks very it looks very sci-fi uh which is cool very cool because i am a complete sci-fi geek and i love anything space related so there is a fantastic blog post and video from alicia stella over at orlandoparkstop.com she's the queen of stalking everything that's going on with epic universe and i love her so i read her blog posts every week because i am a complete epic universe geek now um there's additional video and lots of photos from bio reconstruct and i've put a link in the show notes you can go and watch the video it's about five minutes but it's a full rundown of everything that i've just spoken about um, and you can really see uh, how much the park has moved on in the last two months which is fantastic so moving on to the rest of universal the minion cafe construction which is opposite what will be the new minion ride is 
absolutely motoring away. All the facades are up. There's lots going on there. And it looks to be on track to open when they relaunch that whole opening section of the park, which is going to be called renamed Illumination Avenue. Um, so summer, we believe that will be open. But of course, when summer is, who knows? Um, the other the other uh, piece of news is there's now dairy-free butterbeer available. I am not a fan of butterbeer, as we may have mentioned before, because of the butterbeer bogey incident, but I do know that lots of people love it. So the dairy-free butterbeer, which is also vegan-friendly, is available in cold and frozen, um, and you can get it at Hogsmeade in the Three Broomsticks or at the Leaky Cauldron. Um, in Orlando. It's also available at Universal Hollywood as well. So if butterbeer is your bag and uh, you are vegetarian or vegan and also dairy free, you may also now suck the hideous monstrosity that is the butterbeer. No news of whether they're going to do a hot one yet. Maybe there's something special in a hot one that makes it not dairy free. Who knows? But uh, maybe they'll release a hot one as we're going into the cold season again. So Talking Hollywood, obviously Super Nintendo World is open, looks absolutely amazeballs, and wow, yeah, it just looks so much fun. So I'm so pleased that we are getting a bigger version at Epic Universe. So that's all my universal news for now. Let's whip over to SeaWorld, and back for its sixth year is the Festival of the Seven Seas, which is a food and beverage and music festival, which is on until May the 7th. There's 26 food booths. Uh, with a ridiculous amount of yummy food and, and beverages on offer um, and Capri Sun style cocktails in pouches, which we may have to partake when we go next year. Uh, they also have live music and lots of entertainment on, so there's plenty to do um, if eating isn't your thing, but you know, who doesn't like eating good food? Um, also, we're still expecting the pipeline stand up roller coaster to be opened for the summer season. There's still no news on the official opening date yet, but the track is all finished. They are now on landscaping and all the other visual malarkey that goes along with these things to make it theming, to make the theming look epic. Um, I am sure there will be a soft opening date for SeaWorld annual pass holders. So um, when we get news of that, we'll bring it to you and hopefully some of our favorites who, who do the thing over there will get us some point of view videos and some great feedback on um, the monstrosity that is, shouldn't really complain about roller coasters. They're just not my thing. But Sam absolutely loves them and she cannot wait to try this one out because it will be wonderful for her dodgy back because she doesn't have to sit down. It's got like that little perch that we've spoken about that you kind of sit on. Um, and then surf your way around the it looks huge it does I look absolutely huge so um really she's really excited about the opening of that so as soon as we know we'll bring you the news so moving on to Disney so we've got lots of Disney news not quite as much as last month though you'll be pleased to know because otherwise we'll be here for seven years again uh water park refurb so Typhoon Lagoon reopens and Blizzard Beach closes on the 18th of March this is regular the usual Actually, a bit later than it usually does. The usual annual um, refurb, tart up, whatever they do to water parks. I've been to Disney, I don't know, 15, 20 times. Never been to a water park. Might have to change that, but that's because we usually go in January or February time. It's bloody cold. Well, not for us Brits, but for the Floridians, it's cold. And usually one of them's closed. So maybe we'll change that at some point. Um, in Toy Story Land, the Roundup Rodeo Barbecue has, well, well, officially opens on the 23rd of March, and it does look absolutely delicious. So there will be endless rounds of barbecue meat, uh, all vegan and vegetarian options. If meat is not your thing, it is my thing. Cheddar biscuits, salad, and themed desserts, and it will be brought to your table family style, which means they just keep bringing it out until you tell them to stop. So it's like a lazy buffet. Uh, photos and menu are menus are available over the attractions magazine blog which there is a link in the show notes um and it does look good it really does look good i love barbecue um 
and it just looks yummy and it's not that expensive from from what we've seen um for park food uh so where are we moving to now oh we're off to hollywood studios so that has been absolutely awash with characters in february including chippendale in their rescue rangers outfits and clarice the chipmunk uh, edna mode frozone and mr and mrs incredible have been out and also powerline max so max is well max comes out at special occasions and randomly so but he's been out for a proper meet and greet in february um and also as the new season of the mandalorian dropped for this week um Jin Jorin, who is the Mandalorian for you un, uneducated people, um, and Grogu are, are, are doing their thing inside Galaxy's Edge, shockingly enough. Um, and Grogu is is a moving, living thing. So if you watch the videos of him, you can see Grogu waving his hands, he's moving his mouth, he's blinking his eyes, uh, and he's in a bag uh, around the Mandalorians. Um, he's, he's in a like a like a like a side bag. Um, being carried around so yeah he's Grogu actually moves which is really cute um the Epcot Clare and Garden Festival is also well underway with its a bajillion food offerings yum 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 uh, and we've already spoken about food a ridiculous amount this month and obviously our next full episode is on food festivals um and also the Encanto Spaceship Earth show is now on as part of the Flower and Garden Festival. So there's a light show uh, with fireworks and other stuff going on um, on Spaceship Earth, which is cool because there isn't really much else going on entertainment wise at Epcot at the moment, I don't think. I could be wrong. Don't judge me. So also opening late this year at Epcot is the Journey of Water, which is inspired by Moana, which is a walkthrough attraction behind Spaceship Earth and will be near the seas um, with Nemo and friends. Um, also under construction in this area is going to be called the Communicle Hall and the Communicle Plaza, which will be home to character meet and greets and will be a special event space. And there will also be um, an outdoor stage theatre where guests can watch well performances at the front and the back of the area um so lots of construction has been going on in this area of the park and again bio reconstruct has put up um a, a shed load of pictures and videos uh, on his twitter channel which is well worth going to have a look at and it is very good to see that epcot is getting some well needed tlc because it was sort of like the tired Park. It wasn't. It, it wasn't exactly how Walt envisioned it was going to be, and they're, they're making some improvements to make it make it more. I don't know, not entertaining, more enticing for people to come and see. So there's there's lots there's lots more going on at Epcot now, which is great. Um, but they also do amazing food. So what's what's not to love? Anybody would think that we were obsessed with food, maybe. Uh, the other bit of Disney news, obviously, is Tiano's Bio Adventure, the revamped Splash Mountain attraction, is also having a huge amount of work. So I have no idea what's been going on, whether the Disney Imagineers have gone, oh, those guys at Universal seem to whack things up really quickly. But they seem to have motored on with doing this. Um, construction is moving at speed. Uh, there's some there's some great images over at the blog uh, blog Mickey. I'll put a link in the show notes and you can see just how much has been done. So the briar patch at the front has come out, um, which is the bit in front of the, the, the hideous drop. I have ridden Splash Mountain once, um, which took a lot, a lot for me because I am the world's biggest wuss, uh, but I wanted to ride it. Um, so we're both really excited to see uh, what they do. We, we spoke about this in our last news roundup about Splash Mountain, about sort of like the contra controversy behind it. Um, but, but I'm really pleased that they are theming it on a similar southern southern people of colour um, attraction. Uh, so we'll, we'll see we'll see what how it goes and on when it's due to open. Um, so we have some Disneyland Paris news because obviously we've declared our love for our home park of Disneyland Paris. And although technically it's not Orlando news, it's still Disney news and it's still park news. So 
The Mandalorian is also at DLP2. So you can find him and Grogu in Discovery Land from March the 1st, which was when um, the new season of The Mandalorian dropped, right through to the 14th of March. So he's only there for two weeks. Um, absolutely gutted, as I said, that I can't go and meet him. But I'm sure I'll meet him at some point. Um, the Avengers Power the Night drone show is currently playing at Hollywood Studios. And by all accounts, it is absolutely amazing. So um, there's projections on the Tower of Terror uh, with a with a drone show that goes along alongside it. Um, there's some videos on YouTube. If you go and look up, I should have found a link and put it in the show notes. But if you go and search on YouTube for the Avengers nighttime show at Disneyland Paris, you'll see it. And it's on until the 8th of May. So guttingly, Sam and I won't be able to see it in the flesh, so to speak. Uh, but I've watched a couple of YouTube videos and it just looks absolutely amazing. Um, Paris is because of Paris's um, proximity to residential areas. They are limited on the amount of fireworks and noise that they make, which is why we have a, an epic water fountain show um, and projection show on the castle in our version of of the Magic Kingdom, which is called Disney Park. Um, and they they try to do something similar in the Paris Hollywood Studios Park by by putting a light show on the Tower of Terror. They've done it for Star Wars weekends um, and, and other themes, and it works really, really well. But with all the drone technology that they've got now, it means that they can put on a full nighttime spectacular with very very limited fireworks, which which means it it, it works well with the, the specific the specific um, constrictions that they have around being in a residential area, which is great. Um, and talking of projections, the Disney Dreams uh, fan favourite iconic nighttime spectacular is coming back to Disneyland Park and is returning on April the 12th. So we'd imagine that that is going to run um, for the next while. Um, it, that, it's a great nighttime show. It really is. So. Last but not least from Disneyland Paris uh, is the news that restaurant Hakuna Matata. I have to say it that way, sorry. So restaurant Hakuna Matata has a new menu. Uh, this was always one of our favourites um, for quicker camp service when we went to Disneyland Paris because they did a kebab. Yep, us Brits do love a kebab. Um, the new menu looks way more fancy and exotic. Uh, the thing about Disneyland Paris is they like to be extravagant with their food. Um, and we liked this restaurant because they did um, they did a kebab, which was like a pit of bread with vegetables and yum, this yummy chicken. I think it was chicken. Yeah, it was chicken. Yummy chicken um, uh, with uh, uh, waffly sort of fries, or you could upgrade to sweet potato fries if you wanted to. Um, so they've replaced our beloved kebab with a pulled beef sandwich, which is very similar to the Old Faithful kebab and comes with sweet potato fries. Um, so, yeah, so if you uh, if you are a, a fan favourite of Hakuna Matata, Hakuna Matata um, the, rest, the restaurant has changed their menu quite drastically, uh, but the pulled beef sandwich uh, looks, to, looks to still hit the spot. So um, looking forward to seeing some pictures from people that we know that have tried it. So let's go uh, outside the parks, but but still covering um, the gist of news. So Rogers the Musical is happening. Yes, yes, it is, which gets me very, very super excited about it. Uh, and if you have no idea what I am talking about, there is a video in the show notes. Um, if you are a fan of the Hawkeye TV show, you will know that in one episode, Clint and his family go to see Rogers the Musical, which is about how the Avengers saved New York. <laughs> and it is absolutely Broadway hamming it up. Fantastic. I can do it all day. Um, and they are, Disney are actually bringing this musical to life, thanks to Kevin Feige, who is a genius. Yeah. So, yeah, a, a video in the show notes. Um, they've started casting started casting already so no idea when it will be when it will be a thing but i'm i'm excited please disney bring it to a park thank 
please bring it to a park. Don't make me go and have to watch it. I want to see it at a park. Um, moving on to other news. Um, Chicago-based Jojo Shake Bar are opening a restaurant at Point Orlando uh, on March 18th, which will be serving 80s and 90s nostalgia dinner fare, which sounds right up our street. Uh, so handcrafted cocktails, decadent desserts, and over-the-top biggie shakes. Uh, the pictures look absolutely amazing. Um, so go and check that out uh, if you can. Um, so that's the quick uh, quick news roundup from February February this this month. Um, hopefully, there will be a continuing stream of news and not the massive dump we had at the beginning of the year. So these news videos should stay less than half an hour if we're lucky, because nobody needs 90 minutes of their life to talk about news. Um, so we'll be back for our next full episode on food festivals uh, in the next couple of weeks. There'll be some uh, short videos from us uh, about the epicness of Disneyland Paris. Um, and please check out the show notes for all the links um, for the videos and and um, and blog posts that I mentioned. So that's all from us for now, and we'll see you again soon. Thanks for listening. Bye.